thank you for coming and I apologize for the confusion um, that um, in my head, because there was the territorial service online today, um, I wasn't doing a Zoom and then it was pointed out by Stephen earlier today that um, it was in the newsletter and I wanted to keep faith with if there were others that might come um, that we wouldn't um, cut them off. So thank you for coming. It's nice to see you all um, and a happy new year to you all. Um, we say that as a matter of course, um, and yet I think this was the most anticlimactical new year I think I've ever had. We were in bed by about half past eight, nine o'clock, and I've never not seen a new year in, but circumstances meant um, uh, that was the best thing to do. Um, and uh, I think you will have seen no end of stuff about uh, 2020 uh, being the worst year ever, and we're pleased to see the end of it. And 2021, is a whole new year. And I guess we still start any new year with an element of hope and excitement, um, unless you watch the news, and then that can quickly be, um, um, can quickly disappear. Um, and we, we live in these weird days that we still do, and uh, time marches on, everything keeps going. Um, and I think I, I said before in a note on the, the Facebook page, it's the weirdest thing ever going into a year with nothing planned and wanting desperately to put something in the diary, something on the wall planner, and yet really feeling like, what, what do you do? Do you, put, um, do you put things on there for them to be canceled or, or do you keep going? I guess that's probably how we all feel. Um, and it'll be interesting because they say hindsight is a wonderful thing that in uh, months, in a year's time, in two years time, um, when we look back upon this time, um, what we'll feel about it. Um, I think um, some of the things that we perhaps look forward to, um, holidays for many people, different family events, um, I think just even having those things to look forward to would lift our spirits. Um, so we, we wait and see what this, this year brings for us. Um, but um, I've chosen a song for us to start with, um, one that you will, I'm sure, have heard and recognise, um, but where that starts with saying, Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided. And whatever we find ourselves, whatever the circumstances, we do know um, that God offers us um, something and um, offers us the hope that we often have spoken about over the Advent season. So um, join in and sing if you want, or just listen and hum or whatever you're comfortable with doing. But Lord, for the years, your love has kept and guided.
Thank you. Sorry, that was a bit glitchy at the beginning with some of you. Um, but the, um, the words there, the reminder for us um, that um, God is the center. And there's a couple of things that I want to pick up on. And uh, one of them just inform my thought um, a little later. But those, um, those final words of that last verse say, past put behind us for the future take us. And um, I wonder for you as an individual, um, discount your wider family, discount the core, um, but as you've hit this new year and uh, um, I wonder for you um, what there is of the past you put behind you and uh, what of the future that you want to take um, God into the future with you. Um, just thoughts for you. Um, we're going to share in just a moment in a, 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 vid a video of a prayer uh, for the new year and um, the opportunity just to sit and reflect for ourselves primarily. Um, perhaps it's not something we do. We perhaps run around and consider everybody else, um, but don't think about others so much. Um, but before we want to before we do that, I want us just to, um, to, to pause to think about um, the many people affected, particularly at this time by health issues. It's even a case of if it's nothing to do with COVID. It's still matters of concern with people unable to have uh, routine operations that are needed for their well-being and their health. The, um, the fear of even going to a doctor's surgery where you might be in contact with people with COVID. Just everything is made more difficult um, with our health. And uh, of course, we want to take time to consider people in our own fellowship. And we think particularly of uh, Susan Tucker, who's, who's struggling uh, with the effects of COVID and um, and just uh, an infection as well and just we know just how um, any any in health ill health brings us down and uh, there'll be many fighting the everyday um, ill health and we think of them and there's some of us here on this zoom that are, are concerned about health matters um, and then we some of you will have picked up on Facebook um, just not long ago that uh, Christine Dark has had a very sudden bereavement um, in her family um, along with we think about the shop volunteers there of uh, the sudden passing of a, another volunteer and it's only about a year ago isn't it that we lost Lisa and now for Peter um, to have passed so suddenly and that impacts us um, and uh, affects us. So we want to pause to consider many others as we listen to and follow this prayer through. Um, and I just ask you to be praying not only for yourselves, but for others who we know lift it, need lifting up to God and uh, are being prayed for just now. So let's just share in prayer as we share this prayer for the new year.
opportunity for us to consider um, this new year again, what we need to leave behind us, what we need to um, forgive and forget, what we need to move on from and what we need to look to with hope um, for the future. So let's just share a prayer for ourselves, for our core, for our, our family, our friends and the wider world just now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you because you know um, just the, exactly the circumstances we all find ourselves in. You know that this world has been turned upside down in these last months and it continues to be in a state of um, brokenness, I guess. Um, and I, and I, I ask that through this, that we will continue to see something of you for ourselves, that we would um, be continually helped to put things, life into perspective, um, that we will be reminded of the things that are most important to us. Father, help us to cope with the very practical things, the challenges that come our way. And that as we um, continue to take each day as it comes, that you watch over us, that you place your hand of protection on us. Father, we want to pray for those of our fellowship struggling with health issues. Um, some will be related to COVID, some uh, long-term health challenges, others just new things going on. Father, I pray that each one will receive the medical attention that they need. But in the time of perhaps waiting and frustration, that you would um, give them patience and, and help them to endure what they need to go through. Father, we thank you in these days for those four words that we've repeated over and over again through Advent. But we thank you because of the joy that we know because of you, the hope that we have, the love and the peace that can surround us when we just sit in your presence and we reach out to you. So, Father, just in these few moments that we spend together this day, um, may you bring that each to us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> I um, was um, looking through some um, videos some weeks ago and, uh, and just seeing the immense variety um, that COVID has brought to our screen and the many different things that have um, been put together and the talents that have been gathered and people that have tried stuff that perhaps would never have tried it before. Um, and um, I, I guess it was uh, reminding people of the talents that they have, the gifts that God's given us to perhaps go unnoticed and unused so much of the time, but because of circumstances, we've been forced out of our comfort zone. Um, and uh, I guess it reminded me of um, when we think about the beginning of a new year, and for many of us, we probably can hardly remember that, that day when we, we really met with Jesus for the first time, that we came face to face with him, that our lives were turned upside down, uh, and for some of us, perhaps, who were brought, born into and brought up in the Salvation Army, um, that was a, a slow realisation and just something that has become part of us. Um, but um, we don't, I just want us to listen to um, uh, the Melbourne Staff Band playing um, What a Wonderful Day. And just to remind us that in the midst of everything, just of the wonderful um, opportunity that we've had and uh, the presence of God in each of our lives. Just enjoy this.
just chosen to share a few verses with you from uh, the second, Paul's second book to Timothy. And um, just before I share it with you, I'm reading from the Good News Bible um, today. Um, but just let me share with you with just the, the um, introduction um, that it says on this um, very short letter. Um, Paul's second letter to Timothy consists largely of personal advice to Timothy as a younger colleague and assistant. The main theme is endurance. Timothy is advised and encouraged to keep on witnessing faithfully to Jesus Christ, to hold to the true teaching of the good news of the Old Testament, and to do his duty as teacher and evangelist, all in the face of suffering and opposition. Um, and as I read that, I thought, well, Paul might have written it to Timothy, but I think um, is quite apt for any of us also in these days, particularly. I just want to read you a few verses from um, the third chapter, um, beginning at verse 10. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10 through the, to the end of the chapter. But you have followed my teaching, says Paul, my conduct and my purpose in life. You have observed my faith, my patience, my love, and my endurance, my persecutions and my sufferings. You know all that happened to me in Antioch, Iconium and Lystra, the terrible persecutions I endured, but the Lord rescued me from them all. Everyone who wants to live a godly life in union with Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And evil persons and imposters will keep on going from bad to worse deceiving others and being deceived themselves. But as for you, continue in the truth that you were taught and firmly believe. You know who your teachers were, and you remember that ever since you were a child, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching the truth, rebuking error, connecting correcting faults and giving instruction for right living so that the person who serves God may be fully qualified and equipped to do every good kind of deed um, verses from many many years ago and uh, I'm sure you'll be now um, but um, the reminder to us that in the world that we live in and the imperfect world, that so there will be persecutions. And uh, that's not just for the unrighteous and the non-believer, but for those of us as believers, God um, makes it quite clear that the persecutions will continue. And this being written by Paul and um, the reminder of his own personal persecutions and yet the truth that he knew through the word of God and the truth that he knew that he had to tell Timothy that in order to live a godly life, to be able to keep his eyes fixed on what was most important, so the word of God needed to be opened. Now, I have to say, I start many a new year with one of these, I'm going to read through the Bible in a year hopes. And I probably get to the 2nd or 3rd of January and then I'm day behind. Then I get to the end of the week and I'm two or three days behind um, and I think, oh, well, I'll make it up. And then by the time you're two weeks behind, you just don't don't make it. Um, but I, I think in the, the reminder of these days and these days of continued frustration and uh, the continued waiting on what will the news bring us next, um, that continued hope. Um, that we've spoken about throughout the last um, month, particularly in the season of Advent, um, that we would continue to have hope that in all the persecutions, that in all the frustrations, in all the things that seem to be going wrong, that, um, that God gives us a hope. And the reminder that not only did he give us that hope at the beginning of the Advent season, but also the peace and the joy and the love that goes with it. And I guess simply just as Paul was trying to remind 
find his um, his apprentice, uh, Timothy, just then the reminder for us um, with the frustration. Um, March of last year, we spent uh, the time thinking, well, it'll j just be a couple of months, then we'll be back to normal. And then we realised that actually it wasn't going to be till the summer. And then as the summer happened, we came back again. And so um, everything carried on. Um, and then it became apparent that we weren't going to celebrate Christmas together. Um, and I, I, it's almost unbelievable, isn't it, that, um, that all this time is gone. And yet we don't give up hope, do we? Because that, that future that lies ahead of us, um, the path that God has for us. Uh, I wonder when we reflect on the, this time, whether um, we will have seen it as some of it as wasted time, whether we will have seen it as putting good use, um, this time to good use, perhaps to, to deepen relationship with our families, to perhaps we've um, had opportunity to be more uh, with, perhaps for some of us, perhaps our health is actually better because we're not rushing around quite as much. Um, there are many, many things um, in the in the, the the temporariness of life um, that seem like the, the the worst thing ever when we're in the middle of it, and yet when we look back on it, we will see God's hand in it. So the reminder from Paul that Scripture, inspired by God, and is useful for teaching the truth, rebuking error correcting faults and giving instruction for right living so that the person who serves God may be fully qualified and equipped to do every kind of good deed. And I guess my New Year's wish, my New Year's resolution for us each is that we will be better equipped and, equipped and better qualified to do every kind of good deed that God requires of us. That as we enter 2021, with a hesitancy to write anything in our diary, but yet with an excitement that something sometime will go in there for us to look forward to. So this new year, I do wish you a very happy new year, whatever that looks like, but I do wish that God will give to us again, the joy um, that he brings to us, that the past, we will look, leave the past behind us, and that we will step out into the future with him. A final song together. Um, and uh, I thought it was, uh, it was apt to ask for God to give us some vision of what he would have for us. So the song that we share together now is Be Thou My Vision.
Thank you for um, coming along and sharing with us this afternoon. Um, and uh, the benediction I've chosen is one that's well known to us and I've used several times, but I, I love it. And I love the verse that comes from in uh, Romans 15 and verse 13. Let me just read it to you from the Good News Bible. May God, the source of hope, fill you with all joy and peace by means of your faith in him so that your hope will continue to grow by the power of the Holy Spirit. We will um, share in, in the benediction. If you wanna sing along, uh, please feel free, but uh, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. Let's share a benediction. <laughs> Here we go. May the God of hope fill you with all joy as you trust in him, as you trust in him, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. As you trust in him, as you trust in him, so that you Again. May the God fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, as you trust in Him. May the God fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, as you trust in Him, so that you Thank you. God bless you each. Happy New Year. Glory then now with Bar. One last time. Can't say it for another year now.